Hello everyone. For today's video, I would like to share my integration approach for a project where I use a Jetson Nano and a CM550 bot. Actually, it's a spy robot. So I'm going to describe the enhanced spy robot I'm using and then uh, also some more detail about the, how I use the Jetson Nano 2GB as a controller of this enhanced spy robot. So this is the basic platform. You can see it's just a, a spy framework and there's two Pentel servo. These are going to be set up so that they are controlled by the Jetson Nano 2GB directly. And you can see also why I am cho I chose the Spy to test out the Jetson Nano because it's only only one is big enough and stable platform enough so I can put the Jetson Nano together with in here. And the 4 get a bit fits in there too. And uh, the DMS80 and the leg servo remain under the control of the CM550. Here the bottom view of the robot. You can see that's where I mount the CM550. I knew that the LiPo battery that come with the engineering kit is probably not going to have enough room to do all this work. So I took uh, a LiPo battery that I have for the TurboBot 3 and I put it there. Hopefully it will last longer. It turned out maybe 5-7 minutes of play with this one on battery. And then it's kind of interesting though. Uh, the CM550 at that time doesn't, you know, doesn't give you the low voltage beeps and the uh, Jensen, uh, Jensen Nano also still functioning except some of the legs start collapsing you can see it, it doesn't write where it's supposed to be it kind of dropped down uh, because I guess not enough current left or enough voltage left in some of the servos so it's not running low okay the uh, power converter I use is the same one I use in the other project they advertise anyway up to 5 amp so we'll see so but i think it did it for a while but a very short time and as you notice because i've mounted the ripple battery and cm5 t beneath the spy framework now in the uh, the spy platform i have to somehow raise it up high so that I can use the existing robotic motion units that already made it for us very nicely. And that easily done, all you need to do is just put motion offset in all the even servo and you got it made. I didn't have to do anything hard as far as making the robot move. Let's look at the peripheral view. So we have the Pi camera, of course, uh, under the control of the Jetson Nano. The DMS-80 under the control of CM550. You can see the uh, the uh, the pla the Pi camera is sitting on a, a two servo Pentio platform. You can see again it, it feed into uh, U2D2 because it's controlled by the Jetson Nano directly. Okay, and then also you see here this is a kind of a jam HDMI display emulator, uh, which I when I read up a board about this technology developed for cryptocurrency. That's how they run those farms of PCs and desktop trying to make money so we got to use it and it, it got a nice very cheap seven seven eight dollars not much at all I also use an LLN01 so that the JSON Nano can send remote con packet into the CM550 through its UART port now if you notice I use an Ethernet cable into the Jetson Nano instead of the Wi-Fi dongle that come with the uh, just a nano two gigabyte. The reason is this: when I was testing everything, um, just the just a nano alone by itself, that Wi-Fi dongle was fine in my home setup, home network, home Wi-Fi network. But as soon as I put it on the real robot and turn all these motors on, it start interfering or something. The Wi-Fi signal become weak, and then I couldn't connect or, or, or my software couldn't find this uh, Jetson Nano anymore through Wi-Fi so that's why I had to use the Ethernet cable instead so we were stuck as a consequence of that I have a, one spare USB 2 port down beneath here but right now I'm not using it for anything let's talk about the communication scheme to so the Jetson Nano you control the camera using this uh, G streamer pipeline and this is the first time I use this te uh, this technology, and I absolutely love it. I can get 640 by 40 at 120 frames per second out of it out of the Pi camera. 
uh, for the Pentil, the two Pentil servo, I use DXL SDK packet. It controls via U2D2, which is TTDI uh, USB zero, and they run at uh, one megabit per second. JNano also send remote code packet to the CM550 via the LN101, so that TTI USB one, and that's set at 115 uh, kilobit per second. The CM550 it controls its legs. I am using you know to the usual way. Uh, you can use either TAS or Pi uh, micro micro Python uh, uh, code for that. So uh, if you use the uh, Dex Nano before, you probably know that they provide a VNC server, but it's so slow, nobody like it. I hate it. But people suggest to use No Machine Viewer, and I did that, and I'm happy with you. You can see in the uh, uh, demo video, you see it's pretty decent. This is a good, good thing to do. At least it's provide free for us, a simple user here. Yeah? So and you can see also here you can see my good old uh, using good old code block as development uh, for C++ code on the Jetson Nano. This one here is a demonstration video and this one here is using pure battery okay. So you can see there's only one ethernet cable you can see connected to the robot here. So this is a little Logitech webcam to see it's tracking the red ball and here it is in inside uh, the uh, no machine viewer window. Uh, not shown here. I'm about to start, but I've been using. I have a command where I can tilt the camera up and down so I can center the uh, red ball. And I'm when I start the video, you can see I extract the color property and then I put it on tracking. Okay, and you can see how the live quote unquote live video feed here and the open target. Uh, frame process and image processing processing by OpenCV how it's working and how the robot reacting over here okay here we go ah, here. so I just extract the color probably now I'll check tracking That's a nano two gigabyte. Pretty impressive. But you notice system throttle due to over turn. So if this can do here only on two four, I mean it's pretty decent. <laughs> okay, on the next one, uh, the power supply is on AC power supply. So the Jetson Nano has its own power supply, and the CM five fifteen has its own power supply. Okay, and it has been working on tracking a red ball already for a certain period when this video is going to start. And because I just stop it, and then I'm going to start tracking again. You can see how it go, and then if it, uh, and then sometimes I stop it again, start it again, just to see how it behaves. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to stop tracking again. You hear the beep beep beep. One beep is when it's slow, uh, slow down. One beep is when it speed up from the motion speed. So it mostly in this right now is. Uh, let me stop here. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, the way the algorithm is set up is, whenever it lost the ball, so we say it showed nothing here. And it will stop the robot. And you can see that because my op a window is open outside. So when the robot shifted over here, the auto white feature is still on. So it makes everything darker in the room. So when it's dark, it couldn't find the ball. So everything is black here. So it stopped the robot. And what I can do, you can see that it's a bunch of uh, left turn signal I'm about to push because I'm going to manually force it to go left to find the ball again, essentially. So you can see. Uh, I can weave in uh, manual control uh, during its auto mo in the uh, auto tracking mode. Okay, here we continue here. 
So yeah, by setting up bunches of that command, you bring it back in and start tracking again. So it lost that one that time, but it's kind of on its own. I was surprised. So you see that different kind of tone. You can see I, my eye probably can still be improved because it the struggle to find. Here we go. So I just push the stop command so it's the emergency stop here. Maybe you can see so it just stop it. Nothing wrong with it. I just want to stop it and it started again. So you can see how we had here. And here we start again. So that's a nano is way superior than the alpha activity I can see. Uh, later, I will pick the same robot, same software, but I'm going to put the R54B here, and then we can compare the performance between the two. Okay, that's it, folks. Until next time.